Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. My name's Drake. We've got a good video for you guys today. I, a couple days ago, three or four days ago, I posted a video claiming that I knew that Peter Schiff had bought and used Bitcoin. Now, I didn't get into a lot of specifics on what I was referring to, uh, because specifically I wanted to see if we could get Peter back over to the channel, have him watch the video, maybe have him comment and possibly get him on the channel, uh, maybe sometime in the future. And to my surprise, guys, last night I was looking at the, at my account and Peter did come by the channel, watched the video and left very good comment. So. We are going to get into all of that. We're going to get into the comment that Peter left. Uh, we're going to get into what I was referring to, all of this and more. Uh, but it is a new month as of yesterday. And so we have a new sanctuary that we're spotlighting, guys. This is Olive Branch Micro Sanctuary. This is their Facebook. And as you can see right here, they only have. 51 followers on Facebook. So this is a very, very, very small, like it says right here, micro sanctuary. So like I always say, these smaller sanctuaries really appreciate even very little amounts. I mean, if, if, everybody that subscribed to my channel here on YouTube went over and just donated $1 to these guys, this would help them out tremendously. So please go over, even if you just go over and hit the like button, you know, follow them on Facebook or Instagram, even that really goes a long way to help helping something this small guys. But you can kind of see they've got, you know, a black cat, which is especially relevant to the black cat crypto club. They've got bunnies, dogs. Look at this dude. Just <laughs> soak it up. They've got roosters and chickens. This guy is looking mighty fine. Um, but just really cool stuff that they're doing over here at Olive Branch Micro Sanctuary. These guys are out of Virginia. But just a small, small sanctuary. They've, you know, they've got a bunch of chickens and, and roosters. And I don't know, that sticks out to me because I have a rooster. His name's Tyler. I can actually hear him crowing outside <laughs> right now. But one thing people don't really understand about chickens and roosters, guys, is the personality. I mean, Tyler is a character and most people don't think chickens have much personality but that guy is full of it he is a firecracker and i can go outside and i can yell for him you know tyler come here and he'll he'll come running like he knows his name uh you know he's not a bird bird brained uh you know very very full of full of character, very full of life. Now this is their link tree guys. If you want, go over and donate. You can do their Amazon wish list, their Chewy wish list. Again, just go over and like them on Instagram and Facebook. They've got their PayPal and their Venmo down here as well. And all of that information is listed in the description of my videos. So again, guys, small, very, very, very small sanctuary. It, if you can go over and donate to them, I very much appreciate it. Again, these guys are 501c nonprofit as well. So when they are a 501c nonprofit, anything you donate to them is a tax write-off for you as well. So it's a win-win, guys. Go, go over and help them out. Hey, Peter, if you're watching again, I'd like to know what your view on helping the animals out over it olive branch would be. Is there any way I can twist your arm and get you over and uh, donate a bit to olive branch? I would have to do an entire video on Peter Schiff 
and what a great guy he is for helping these animals out if you were to do that so uh plus it seems like you're the kind of guy that could actually really benefit from having a ta tax uh write-off for something like this so peter go over donate to, uh, to olive branch micro sanctuary okay Let's get into this. Let's hop over. We're going to look at the uh, comment that Peter left on my video last night. He says, OK, you've got my attention again, <laughs> but you are reading way too much into this. There is no grand plan. I not, never bought any Bitcoin. I thought about buying when I first heard about it, but never did. So I blew that opportunity. Interesting. But had I bought back then, it's very likely I would have already sold most of it, not all of it. I would have already sold most of it, not all of it. Huh, interesting. Uh, I did launch 50 ordinals. People paid in Bitcoin, but my share was sold for dollars. I was given some Bitcoin years ago. I held until it was lost, which I, I did know that from what I understand, you lost the seed phrase, um, which is a shame. I would actually love to hear more about that. Uh, but anyways, let's go on. You should address my last comment on your digital camera analogy. I am curious, though, about your so-called proof that I bought Bitcoin. So go ahead and publish that. Maybe I'll comment again. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Maybe I'll comment again. Okay, so I wrote back to Peter and I said, wow, yeah, I'm glad to hear from you again. Yes, as far as the end of my video goes, speculating on whether you are playing both sides of the field, I'm sure I am reading too much into that. Uh, or at least you would never admit to it, right? Wink, wink. Now, guys, <laughs> let's let's be honest here. I I probably am reading too much into that. And in fact, I wasn't really reading into that. All I was saying was that if it were me, if I were in Peter's shoe, shoes and wanted to drive more adoption to Bitcoin, I would do exactly what he's doing now. But guys, we've got to take Peter at his word. We've got to, you know, take him at his word that he doesn't own Bitcoin, right? Like, it's the right thing to do. So anyways, going on, it says uh, the other information I am aware of, but I will go ahead and post a follow up to this video and would love to hear your uh, what you have to say. As for the invite uh, to come to the channel and answer a few questions that I have for you, that is always on the table. Love the attention that you bring to Bitcoin. Hope to talk soon. Okay. <laughs> so Peter actually uh, touched on the point that I am alluding to, but he still claims that he's never bought Bitcoin. But but let's, let's dig a, di a bit deeper into that. What I was referring to was his use of ordinals. Um, so let's get into that. Um, actually, first of all, let's let's get into why I even did these these two videos. And the reason for that is I had actually seen um, the news about Peter, you doing these ordinals uh, when it broke. And it was, I think, May. Uh, let's see, May of last year, I believe. Um, yeah, May 26th, 2023 is when you you tweeted about this. Um, so I heard about it clear back then, but it wasn't until your recent uh, appearance on Scott Melker's channel. And I had that on the TV. And I, I was just kind of passively listening to it. I think I was cleaning or doing something else. And I was just kind of passively listening to you and, and Scott talking about Bitcoin and gold. But what I kept hearing was 
from you, Peter, that uh, there was no use case to Bitcoin. There's no use case. There's no use case. There's no value, no value. And that's, I kept hearing that, you know, from you, Peter. And it, it was you talking about Bitcoin that made it click in my head. Now, call me slow because this news broke uh, over almost a year ago, not quite a year ago. But it took you on Scott, Scott Melker saying over and over again that it didn't have a use case for it to click in my head and kind of make all the, these connections. So we'll go back to Scott Melker's uh, thing. He actually posted a short of what you were saying over there, which is actually very relevant because this is what I was hearing. So we'll get into that in a minute, but I, I want to jump over to um the article that this was a, a year ago that this was posted this was uh coin telegraph and it says crypto hater peter schiff to drop bitcoin or ordinals nft art collection so let's scroll down through here now <laughs> this is honestly this was my first impression um when i read all of this, it, your, your tweet says, I'm pleased to announce an art project with one of my favorite artists, Market Price. This collaboration features original, the original painting Golden Triumph, as well as a series of prints and ordinals inscribed on the Bitcoin blockchain. For information, go to yada yada. Um, and when I heard this, you know, when I read this article, a year ago, um, it didn't it didn't really click to me. Like I was saying, this 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 whole idea didn't really click. It kind of, in my mind, I was like, oh yeah, uh, Peter Schiff using Bitcoin, very hypocritical, and it kind of points to that right here. It says the reaction from the crypto community has been mixed. Some people. Uh, generally baffled, amused, or welcoming, especially Ordinal's proponents, with some keen to point out the apparent hypocrisy. And that was about as deep as I really thought about it at the time. Again, it took you, Peter, uh, saying over and over again on Scott's thing to really make this whole idea click. But... Um, you know, you can see this, this is the art that you used for that, uh, that ordinal. Um, let's just scroll down. I believe you made 50 of these, if I am correct. Um, but anyways, you did get on, you inscribed 50 ordinals. And to do that, first of all, you, you are still maintaining that you've never bought Bitcoin. But, Peter, and I'm not saying it's a lot, okay? You don't have to have a lot of Bitcoin to inscribe 50 ordinals, but you do have to have some Bitcoin. So you had to have bought Maybe maybe it was just a dollar, five dollars worth of Bitcoin to do 50 ordinals, but you still had to have bought five dollars worth of Bitcoin. And am I wrong? I could be wrong. Maybe there's a loophole that I don't know about, but everything that I looked into said that you had to, to mint ordinals, you had to pay in, essentially pay, uh, in Bitcoin. So I don't know, Peter, please, please, uh, you know, clarify that, I guess. How did you mint 50 ordinals without buying Bitcoin? However, guys, we're getting hung up on something that actually isn't, is, is kind of a very side point. The fact that Peter had to have $5 worth of Bitcoin 
is very much a, a side point. The main point is that Peter has used Bitcoin. And it goes to a very logical level. So deductive logic is a very, it's almost like a, a very uh, simple math equation. So deduct, deductive logic often goes something like this. If A equals B and B equals C, then C equals A, right? or A equals C. And so in this case, that logic would go something like this. If there is use for something, there is value. If Peter has used Bitcoin, based on those two pre premises, uh, then Peter must know logically, that Bitcoin has value. If there's a use, there's value. If Peter's used Bitcoin, right? Very simple logic. Uh, but Peter, you continue to refuse to acknowledge that Bitcoin has a use and a value. Now, I want to play this short from Scott Melker because this is very much you know, these both of these videos were very much inspired by you, Peter. And this is really kind of what I heard. Bitcoin doesn't have any actual use. There's nothing you can do with your Bitcoin. There's no value there that you can store because you can't do anything with it today. So you won't be able to do anything with it 100 years from now. So that was that was a lot of what that in interview entailed was uh, you, Peter, saying that uh, there's no value, there's no use, you can't use it today, you, you can't use it in a hundred years. Um, <laughs> all of these things that are obviously false because you've, you have used it, you have used it, and you've, uh, you know, you've seen the value in that very limited use. Now, granted, ordinals are not Bitcoin's prime use. It's not what it's normally used for, um, but you have used it that way. And I think you've seen a lot of value there uh, if you're completely honest with yourself and everybody. Now, I wanna jump over to another um, article because I was kind of looking into how much you sold these for. So let's jump over here again. Uh, so this is from Benzinga, and this is kind of an updated article. This came out just recently, um, this year, uh, March 6th, 2024. But right here, uh, Peter, this is a quote from you. It says, Schiff posted a follow-up comment noting the changes in the market, stating, it looks like the higher prices just brought out some sellers. There are now three, now you're talking about your ordinals here. There are three offered for sale, ranging from 0.355 Bitcoin to 2 Bitcoin. That's about 132,000 for the highest priced one. Now that's a store of value for any ordinal <laughs> that was likely purchased for about $2,000 last year. So according to you, it, apparently you sold these for about $2,000 a piece. So if you made 50 of these, again, going back here, this was your original thing. One thing you can do with your overpriced Bitcoin is buy one of six Golden Triumph ordinals currently offered for sale. If you think 21 million Bitcoin are scarce, there are only 50 of these babies. Get ready holders. Um, I don't know if you meant hodlers. <laughs> or if 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 holders is how the the uh, gold 
the gold folk say it. <laughs> the gold folk. Uh, these bad boys are going to the moon, is what you said. So you made 50 of these. You sold them for about $2,000 a piece. Um, I don't know. There wasn't, there, had, there wasn't a lot of cost there to mint these. Now, granted, my whole thing about you buying Bitcoin, it was very little Bitcoin that you had to buy to mint these, um, these ordinals. But maybe you paid, I don't know, Let's let's go back over here. Let's look at the art here. Um, you you said this was one from one of your favorite artists. It's hard to tell how much this probably cost you because art is a really weird thing. Uh, for some famous artists, something like this could be fairly expensive. But if I'm honest, you know, I could probably have somebody do this for me for very cheap. But let's say. I don't know. Can we assume that maybe you paid $5,000 for the artist to do this art for you? I don't know. Maybe you can chip in and, and share that information with us, Peter. But let's go on $5,000. So you paid $5,000 to the artist. He does this art for you, he or she, and you make 50 of these ordinals that sell for $2,000 a piece. You made a hundred upwards of a hundred thousand dollars. You subtract that artist fee if if we stick to that five thousand dollars assumption, then you made if uh, ninety five thousand dollars off of the use of Bitcoin, Peter, with probably very little work on your end. So, you know, if, if something, if you can use something and turn something like this, a project like this, where likely very little work went into it on your part, and you can make $95,000, upwards of $100,000, just by doing that, I would say that that's very valuable. I know you... You probably value 95 upwards of $100,000. I definitely would value $100,000. I think most people would, would find that very valuable. Um, so I don't know. Tell me how that's not valuable, Peter. <laughs> and granted, this is not the the mainstream way of using Bitcoin, but it is a use, Peter. It is a use and you can't deny that. And you've used it and gained substantially from the use of Bitcoin. So I don't know. Let's go back over to this article because there <laughs> it is kind of funny uh, scrolling through here. You, you kind of say that uh, now that's a store of value. But then, <laughs> then down here, the article says data from the platform Magic. Uh, this is Magic Eden. It says Magic Den, but I believe they meant to say Magic Eden shows that the floor, floor price for Shift's collection plummeted over 57% within hours from 0.7 Bitcoin to 0.3 Bitcoin. At the time of writing, Bitcoin's current value is around 66,381. Wow. I mean, that's volatility, Peter. I don't think I don't think even Bitcoin is that volatile. 57% within hours. I don't know. I've been in Bitcoin since 2012, and I cannot remember a time that Bitcoin has plummeted 57% in hours. So <laughs> anyways, just funny, uh, funny thing to point out there. But, you know, let's, let's just kind of go over this again. Peter, 
I think what you're doing is actually a great job. I I I hate to see uh, you on Twitter and and these podcasts and even mainstream media always talking down about Bitcoin. Uh, you know, it pains my ears to hear that and and see that, but. You know, when it comes down to it, I honestly think that you are bringing more attention to Bitcoin than forcing people away from it. And the reason I say that is because, you know, going back to this very simple logic, if there's a use and a value, every, every interview and every argument that I've really ever seen you make against Bitcoin has has kind of rested on this foundation that you have that Bitcoin has no value. But if we go back to that logic, that very simple logic, it clearly has value. And you clearly, if you if you have any logic, Peter, and any honesty, you've got to admit that it has value. You just have to. Um, but I get it. If you do admit that Bitcoin has value, your entire argument against it that I've ever seen crumbles. And that's why I think you're bringing more adoption, more attention to Bitcoin than you're repelling. Because you're, you're actually bringing a lot of attention to Bitcoin and you're doing so with this very weak logic that has a lot of fallacy into it. So, you know, honestly, uh, Peter, it, it's it's hard to hear you see the or say these things, hear you say these things about Bitcoin. But I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> I can't even be mad. Uh, so keep it up. Um, If if you ever want to come on to the show, I do have a few things that I would love to talk with you about. And actually, I've I've got a few questions that aren't even really confrontational. I actually got into Bitcoin, you know, like I said, in 2012. But you and I and every other Bitcoiner and every other gold bug out there we all talk a lot about inflation and the government's printing of money. But honestly, if I'm completely honest, I didn't really, um, that wasn't a big idea for me and why I was in Bitcoin probably up until about probably six years ago is when I really started looking at, a, at inflation as this big thing. But the reason I got into Bitcoin uh, was for a completely, I won't say completely different uh, thing, because it definitely still has to do with the Federal Reserve and the issuance of money. But it's a different perspective on, on Bitcoin that got me into Bitcoin. And I'd love to, I've never heard you talk about it. I've ne actually never heard quite a few people. Uh, most Bitcoiners, I've not heard talk about this aspect of Bitcoin in relation to the Federal Reserve. So if you want to come on the channel, this is actually something I would actually, I think you'd enjoy talking about it. I definitely would love having you on and, and discussing it with you. Um, but again, Peter, <laughs> I think you have to, you have to admit after this, I mean, the whole thing with you buying Bitcoin is a very side side point of this whole issue. But you've got to admit, if you're logical, you have to admit that there's some value there. Anyways, I'd like to hear what you have to think. If you come back by the the uh, uh, channel, definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about all of this. And Peter, again. Go over and donate to Olive Branch. I'll do a whole video on, on you, man. If you go over and do that, let me know. Anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.